the great Egyptian pyramids have remained firm over the centuries. Their monumental splendor show the effort of the Egyptian people to maintain the glory of their empire. After the tragic reign of Pharaoh Tutankhamun, Egypt was ruled by a former general named Horemheb. Horemheb established order in Egypt, creating stricter laws, which included, as punishment for crimes, cutting off the nose of the evildoer and exiling him into the desert. Horemheb continued the struggle to re-establish the cult of the ancient gods. He even tried to erase the records of Akhenaten's reign, referring to the ancient pharaoh as a demon who wanted to destroy the beliefs in the true gods. Horemheb had no heirs, so he was named as his successor Ramses I, his closest friend and a general of the Egyptian army. Ramses I assumed the throne at about 50 years of age and reigned for only two years. He was replaced by his son Seti I. Seti I fought against the Hittites and conquered the city of Kadesh. The Hittites established a peace agreement with the Egyptians that lasted 15 years. Seti I recovered other territories that had belonged to Egypt before the reign of Akhenaten, but Seti I also stayed a short time on the throne as he died at only 40 years of age. The mummy of Seti I is considered one of the most beautiful and most preserved until today. It is currently in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Seti I's successor was his son, the famous Ramses II. There were 11 sovereigns named Ramses in the history of Egypt, but only Ramses II is known as Ramses the Great. He is considered the greatest pharaoh in Egypt, and his reign was the most prosperous and extensive in Egyptian history. When Ramses II was about 10 years old, his father took him with him in the military campaigns. Ramses was present in battles in Libya, Canaan, and Sinai. Ramses grew up as a young warrior prince and was considered impetuous and arrogant. At the beginning of his reign, he traveled to Phoenicia to define new boundaries for the Egyptian territories. However, he entered the territory of the Hittites and claimed the lands conquered at the time of Tutmos III. The proud Hittites considered it an offense, and the war between two empires started again. The king of the Hittites summoned many soldiers and asked for reinforcements of cities and towns allied to the Hittites. Ramses II also had a large army, composed of Egyptian soldiers, African and Lebanese mercenaries. Ramses had a strong and impatient personality. This made him take the initiative and march towards Kadesh, which had been reconquered by the Hittites. The Egyptian army was organized in four divisions. Although they were numerically inferior to the Hittites, they were better trained and disciplined. Suddenly, two Hittite soldiers gave themselves to the Egyptians. They claimed to be deserters, but in fact, they were spies. After gaining the trust of the Egyptians, the spies passed the false information that the Hittite army was still far from Kadesh. Ramses wanted to take the opportunity to quickly reconquer the city and advance with his personal guard and a division of his army, while the other Egyptian forces advanced in slower pace. Already near the city of Kadesh, Ramses realized that he had fallen into a trap. The Hittites emerged from different directions and surrounded the Egyptian troops. It was such an unexpected event that it was recorded as the first military ambush in history. Even surrounded, Ramses and his personal guard used their war chariots and managed to make way against the enemy troops, breaking the siege. Meanwhile, the Egyptian infantry contained the advance of the enemies. Ramses managed to regroup with the other divisions of his army that came to his aid. Then he launched a counterattack that quickly dispersed the Hittites. That day, the king of the Hittites lost his brother, who was killed during the battle. Finally, the two forces retreated both with many casualties and exhausted soldiers. Ramses retreated to Egypt and King Hittite to the north of his territory. Technically, the fight had ended in a tie, but both leaders declared to have come out as winners of the battle. After a few more years of conflict and hostilities, Egypt finally signed a peace treaty with the Hittite Empire. It was a remarkable event, as it was the first peace treaty in history. The peace treaty was also motivated by the growing threat of the Assyrian Empire. They were increasingly strong and were a danger to Egyptians and Hittites. In the peace treaty, the Egyptian Empire and the Hittite Empire promised to support each other against external threats, something that delayed the advance of the Assyrians for some time. 
For almost being defeated, Ramses II became wiser and more cautious. During his reign, he maintained the alliance with the Hittites. Strange as it may seem, Ramses II married three or four daughters, but there are discussions about whether this really happened. Also, during the reign of Ramses II, the cities grew in size and population. Many temples and other works were built, bringing more prosperity to Egypt. Today, the name Ramses II became famous for being used in Hollywood movies, where he is pointed out as the pharaoh of the biblical exodus, responsible for imprisoning and enslaving the Hebrews in Egypt. However, more complete studies point out that Tutmos III as the pharaoh of the exodus. Ramses II will have died at over 90 years of age, something quite unusual at that time. After the death of Ramses, Egypt entered again an unstable period. His children died abruptly, and the Egyptian throne became empty several times, something very dangerous for a powerful nation. The responsibility was assumed by Mernatah, the 13th son of Ramses II. Mernatah was already over 60 years old when he assumed the throne. He did not have the strength to govern the great number of cities and provinces. With the government weakened, the priests of the Temple of Amun came to have even more political power, since they claimed to be the link between the gods and the people. To further complicate matters, Egypt's wealth attracted other greedy kingdoms. Egypt was attacked by pirates from the coast of the Greek islands of western Anatolia. These pirates became known as Sea Peoples. The Sea Peoples were no ordinary pirates. The brutality and frequency of their attacks destabilized the economy and the government of the Great Bronze Age empires. They destroyed almost the entire Minoan and Mycenaean kingdom. They also devastated the Hittite Empire, which was already weakened after several civil wars. We don't know if the Sea Peoples were a single tribe or a confederation of tribes that joined together to loot and invade the Near East, but they were numerous, skilled sailors, and combatants on land. The invasions of the Sea Peoples are probably motivated by natural disasters, earthquakes, and tsunamis that devastated the Aegean islands and the coastal regions of Greece and Turkey. These natural disasters destabilized much of the dominant kingdoms and were responsible for the decline of the Minoan civilization on the island of Crete. Pharaoh Menentah managed to stop the invasion of the Sea Peoples in the Battle of the Delta. But some years later, Pharaoh Ramses III managed to expel the Sea Peoples from Egypt. The Sea Peoples continued to devastate and dominate territories in Palestine. The impact of these invasions was so great that the Sea Peoples are held responsible for the collapse of the Bronze Age. Finally, Ramses III followed the Egyptian tradition of turning enemies into allies. He established agreements with the Nubians and the Libyans, Egypt started to hire mercenaries from the Sea Peoples. Ramses III was a strong pharaoh, but his reign was turbulent. He was murdered at the age of 65 in a coup organized by one of his wives, who wanted his son as the next heir to the throne. Egypt was financially exhausted. Its coffers were emptied by the war against the pirate invaders. The situation was so bad that the population's food was rationed. During this period, the first labor strike in history occurred. When workers from various areas did not receive their grain, they refused to work for the pharaoh. Egypt has entered a vertiginous decline marked by hunger, violence, and corruption. The empire was devastated for about two decades. Egypt was again divided into different dynasties. Ambitious leaders confronted each other in small battles to dominate territories. Egypt enter a phase known as the Third Intermediate Period. During this period, chaos reigned. Part of Egypt was commanded by pharaohs of Lebanese origin, while another part was ruled by pharaohs of Nubian origin. The cunning priests of the Temple of Amun took advantage of the situation and controlled Thebes and other nearby territories. The Assyrians also took advantage of the fall of the Hittite Empire and the weakening of the Egyptians. They invaded Egypt, and in the conquered cities, they placed Assyrian rulers to control the population. Under the rule of the foreign forces, the once proud Egyptian empire was subjugated and impotent, but it would not be the end of its history. There were still many unexpected events.